Thank you. The next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. Does anybody have any questions on the consent agenda? Any public comment? Do I have a motion? Move to approve the consent agenda. Second. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Thank you. The next item up is uh, public comments, and this time it's uh, open for anybody in the public that would like to speak about anything that is not on the agenda tonight. This is your opportunity. Do we have any public comment? Step forward. Make sure that uh, mic's on, Kathy. Pull it up and hit the button. It was on, <laughs> I thought. <laughs> As a bit of background, I'm sure you know that the Hamden landfill is in my backyard. That fact has made me more aware of solid waste issues over the past 40 years than I would really like to be. I followed news of the Perk Fiberite decision and I've watched for this item to appear on your agenda. And I would have come and spoken if it had been on a regular meeting agenda. Somehow I missed notice of the special meeting. So I'm here to briefly, very briefly, state my concerns tonight. I know that I'm beating a dead horse, but that hasn't stopped me in the past. Am I the only person in Hamden who says enough already? Haven't we been the recipient of the state's garbage long enough? Why does the Municipal Review Committee think that a facility that has never been built in this country needs to be built in Hamden? I realize that several counselors have spent many hours on this issue. I realize that the projected tax revenue looks good to counselors. I realize that the facility still has to meet DEP and planning board approval. It was interesting to note, however, in the editorial in the, in the weekend edition of the BDN, that DEP approval was mentioned, but the town approval was not mentioned. I'm assuming that was just an oversight. I realize that PERC did not come through with a proposal to the committee until the 11th hour. There are still questions about the long-term viability of that proposal from PERC. Aren't there more questions about the viability of a facility that has never been built? A facility that is based on new technology? A facility that has limited flexibility for the reduction of waste, something we've all been working on, especially organic waste? I realize that FiberRight will cover the construction costs. Why is the town giving up our accumulated equity in PERC to help fund the infrastructure costs? I also realize that both Bangor and Brewer have signed commitments with FiberRight. It almost feels like I'm in front of a runaway train. And my final comment, I realize that state of the art means many things to different people. Generating methane from trash is a relatively new state of the art. 
I would remind you that burying garbage in a gravel pit at one time was state of the art, and we know what happened there. I thank you for your time. Thank you. The next item on the agenda tonight is the policy agenda under news presentations and awards. First item is Denise Hodgson's retiring from the town clerk for 15 years of service. Denise has asked not to receive any plaques or awards, but the uh, staff has, uh, didn't agree with her. So <laughs> if Denise would join me. <laughs> So I'll say this on behalf of the girls in the office that have worked with you a lot longer than I have, how much they're going to miss you and how much they appreciate everything you've done for them. But on the other hand, I want to thank you for the four years that I've been on the council, that if I've ever had any questions, any issues, I come to you and you've always been very good to answer all those questions for me, helpful all the time, excellent attitude, Denise. I've really enjoyed working with you, and I'm going to miss you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, ladies. And I think at this time, Town Manager Angus Jennings would like to say a couple of words. I'd like to uh, echo the mayor's comments when I uh, got Denise's. Uh, news that she was planning to uh, retire. I was very happy for her and continue to be happy for her on a personal level, her and her family. Um, this is a big milestone and um, we're very excited for what's next for you and we think it will be uh, hopefully a very happy time in your life. Um, on a professional level, it was not good news. Uh, we've been very fortunate to hire Paula and we're very excited to work with Paula Scott and I think people will, um, will be very happy. but. Uh, losing Denise. Denise is an irreplaceable person. There's no question about that, both professionally and personally. So I've been very uh, fortunate in my uh, just over six months working with the community to uh, have the support of such a uh, tremendous team member. And I know I speak for everybody in the building when I say that. Uh, just a couple of uh, points of information for those watching from home. Uh, Denise was hired in, uh, just after the first of the year in 2001. So is a 15-year tenured employee with the town. Uh, she serves as the town clerk and the registrar of voters. Uh, she's a certified municipal clerk, which is a uh, national certification uh, that she earned over the course of three years, attending a full week each year over three years. Uh, so it's a very uh, rigorous uh, certification and something that has brought real value to the community. Uh, she's also served on the board of the Susan G. Komen Foundation for the Cure from 2011 to 2014 and was on the Bangor Race for the Cure Committee from 2001 to 2007 and again in 2009 to 2011. Uh, reaching back a bit further, uh, Denise was the president of her graduating class at Hamden Academy <laughs> <laughs> and was a member of the National Honor Society. So, um, wow, I well, I, I would. <laughs> so, be, before uh, before your uh, you know last moment on this stage, anyway, we, I wanted to make sure that uh, the public recognizes what an asset we've had. Thank you. The other thing is, I want to remind people there's going to be an open house Thursday from one to six for uh, people to come in and say their goodbyes and stuff to Denise on Thursday. Yep. Any other comments anybody would like to say? And the only thing I'd like to say is I'm still mad and will continue to be mad. Um, but um, I, I, it has been a pleasure and a joy to work with Denise. Um, and it's been so much help for me when I was a new counselor and even up to today to be able to pick up the phone, ask questions, and to get directions. So uh, I can't say enough how much I appreciate you and, and your efforts. And again, I'm still mad. <laughs> You'll get over it. <laughs> I, I think it's wonderful. I wish you were all in the room to watch Councilor Soroy actually sort of pout, you know, <laughs> this Iraq war veteran, big guy banker. It's nice to see him upset at something like this. 
Um, and I'll note that in everything else that you cited accurately about Denise, I got a chance to meet her parents this week, and it explained quite a bit about Denise's uh, personality and character. And we will miss you. Okay. The next Thank you all very much for the kind words. I will definitely miss the people in the town of Hamden. Thank you, Denise. Next item is uh, welcome the newly appointed clerk, Paula Scott. Tonight is her official first set in for the uh, council. We welcome you and look forward to many years of you working for the town of Hamden also. The next item was public hearings. We don't have any public hearings on the agenda tonight. The nominations, appointments, and elections. This time we uh, want to do the appointment of Paula Scott as the register of voters. Do we have a motion? I move that we nominate uh, Paula Scott as the registrar of voters. A second. Public comment, discussion. All in favor? All opposed? None. The next item is the nomination of Paula Scott as the agent for Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife. Any public comment? Do I have a motion or a question? Uh, it's re reference to the last item. If I could ask a question about that first. Yeah. Uh, do we have to disappoint Denise as the registrar? <laughs> Thank you. So do I have a... Anybody going to nominate for? Uh... I'll make a motion that we um, approve the nomination of Paula Scott as the agent for Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife. A second. Discussion? All in favor? All opposed? Thank you. The next item is un unfinished business. The first item is service fees, the abatements. Uh, finance committee tonight uh, discuss those abatements and I'll have the chairman of the finance committee review that uh, just a brief overview of the discussion I had tonight in finance committee on the abatement of properties uh, that are considered properties subject to service charges um, the properties are located or part of the property owners community housing and of Maine um, Medicare care Medicaid medical care development doing business as uh, Hamden Meadows um, OHI uh, on two properties Panquist Mental Health and the Housing Foundation um, it was agreed by in finance that we would uh, the five properties that have paid up to this point that we would move forward with abatement public comment seeing none do I have a motion I make a motion that we um, approve uh, moving forward with abatement on the properties noted. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? All those opposed? None? <coughs> the next item would be the process for collections. As noted, um, the properties, there's one property uh, which is medical care development, uh, doing business as Hamden Meadows. Um, is has not made payments and ha in, the, in the past and um, on 2016 taxes. So we're going to move forward uh, with the process of collection on, on said properties and or taxes. Any public comment? Seeing none, do I have a motion? I make a motion that we uh, move forward with the process of collection on the property noted um, Hamden Meadows on 1282 Kennebec Road. I second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Thank you. Next item under unfinished business is the HVAC system quote, recommendations of infrastructure and finance. Councilor Soroyce. Uh, we uh, discuss um, the quote for HA HVAC uh, system. The first thing we'll be doing is uh, the red link thermometer system. Uh, the bill's just uh, at $900, and we are going to pay for that using reserve funds in the municipal building. Any public comment? Seeing none, do I have a motion? 
I make a motion that we um, move forward with to pay uh, the nine hundred dollars for again the red line, uh, red link uh, thermometer system out of the reserve fund for uh, municipal building. Second. Um, and I would also note, just for discussion, that this uh, was investigated a lot in the Infrastructure Committee as well with a recommendation to finance to go ahead. Thank you. Any other discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Thank you. The next item is new business, dangerous building hearing notice. Uh, over the past several months, We've been discussing the property at 758 Main Road North. The building is getting ready to collapse. Uh, it's in danger of going into Route 1A. <coughs> the uh, code enforcement has sent several letters. We've got a list here in front of us of how many different times they've uh, contacted and <coughs> trying to resolve this problem. So tonight uh, we want to vote on whether or not we're going to send this letter out for the dangerous building. Any public comment? Seeing none. Do I have a motion? Um, Councilor McAvoy. Do we, is this a motion or we or do we just refer this for public hearing like we do everything else? I think we're gonna send the, the letter. Right, in order for, in order to send the notice of hearing that's in your packet, I would need a vote of the council, uh, but we've been proceeding uh, with the, the date on the 21st that's in here has not been published. Uh, it re relies on the vote of the council to uh, lock that in, but we have arranged uh, for the town attorney to be present that night, so we're ready to go forward that night if it's the council's will. Thank you. And I'll make a motion we authorize the town manager to send that notice of hearing. I'll make the second, or um, I'll second that, but with a note that we have been discussing this for m numerous months um, and trying to come to a resolution without any success whatsoever. Thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Thank you. Next item under new business is foreclosed properties. Request to advertise for public sale. Uh, no, tip. Oh, sorry. Skipped right over a budget adjustments for TIF, CEA payments. Uh, town Manager Jennings will explain that. Sure. So, um, as the council is aware, the um, uh, community has entered into a number of tax increment fi financing agreements over the years, most recently with Amera Maine. And as part of the TIF agreements, uh, there have been uh, so-called credit enhancement agreements, which uh, entitle, once those are ex executed, both between the municipality and the uh, landowner, those are also approved by the state. And once that happens, uh, those go into effect. And uh, depending on the terms of the credit enhancement agreement, uh, it typically entitles the uh, developer to essentially a rebate of a portion of the property taxes paid. Uh, so the way that works in uh, practice is the property owner is assessed the full amount of taxation, they pay the full bill, uh, upon receipt of the uh, total amount due, a percentage is then sent back to uh, the landowner. So in order for uh, my office to send back the amounts due under the credit enhancement agreements, that amount needs to have been budgeted uh, in the current fiscal year. So because the FY16 budget as approved uh, did not carry the full amount to cover the credit enhancement agreement obligations, uh, I've recommended to the um, finance committee and the committee uh, agreed with the recommendation to authorize a budget adjustment of uh, in the amount of uh, $80,260.11 from the unassigned fund balance to the TIF budget account, uh, which will provide uh, the revenues that we need to honor those agreements under the credit enhancement agreement. I want to uh, make clear for those watching from home uh, what's happened here is, a, is essentially an accounting uh, mix-up in last budget, but the amounts that were reported to the state on the form that sets the property tax rate were, were reported correctly. It was recorded correctly locally. It was reported correctly to the state. Uh, so the amounts that I'm um, uh, recommending the council transfer through the budget adjustment were in fact budgeted. The funds were raised to cover these obligations. 
Uh, it's simply through a, a mix up uh, at the local level. It didn't get into the budget document, which it needed to, to happen. So certainly for the FY17 budget, uh, you will see the uh, full amount budgeted to meet the credit enhancement agreement payments at minimum, and it will be within the budget discussions of whether the council would also like to budget additional TIF monies, which would be available for uh, TIF eligible purposes. Thank you. Any public comment? Seeing none. Do I have a motion from the council? I make a motion that um, we make the budget a budget adjustment uh, for TIF payments. Mid-year adjustment. I'll second that. Discussion. Council. I just, you know, speaking to the public again, um, I guess the way I would put this, and the town manager has al already put it very well, I just want to echo it, that nothing has changed from what we had been doing and what we knew we were doing, uh, except really an accounting mistake, that in all honesty, those of us who were on the council in the last budget process missed. So the public should know nothing's different, no harm, no foul, but we, we screwed up on an accounting uh, procedure that we won't screw up on next time. Thank you. And, and it should also be noted, and this information is in the packet, this um, where the Emeritif was uh, financially is greater than the prior TIFs. The, the amount that had been budgeted over the years had been adequate over the years to meet those credit enhancement agreement obligations. Uh, this year it was not because of the um, um, size of that TIF, but in the, uh, the town attorney provided a three-page uh, write-up that basically indicates that many communities in their first year of TIFs have run into this same budgeting issue. And in the earlier meeting, uh, with the Finance Committee, I've recommended that uh, in the future where there's a consultant engaged to execute the TIF, that they also have a role in making sure it's administered properly. Although at this point, I'm very confident saying that uh, between my work and uh, Tammy Ewing, our finance uh, director, and our uh, town uh, assessor, Kelly Carter, we now have a very good handle on how this needs to be handled administratively. Thank you. Thank you. So we had a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? All opposed? None? Thank you. So now going back to new business under foreclosed properties, request to advertise for public sale, map 13, lot 27A, map 41, lot 18, map 1, lot 56, and map 3, lot 18A. These are all been delinquent in their taxes and would request to go out to advertise for sale. Any public comment? Seeing none, do I have a motion from the council? I make a motion that we approve the request for advertising for public sale uh, for closed properties noted as map 13, lot 27A, map 41, lot 18, map 1, lot 56, and map 3, lot 18A. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? All opposed? Thank you. The next item was Hamden Business Park, renewal of authorization to sell agreement with Epstein's commercial real estate. That was discussed last week in P&D and Councilor McPike. Uh, the Planning and Development Committee uh, um, recommended to the council that we renew the uh, um, sales agreement uh, for our lots at the Hamden Business Park with uh, Epstein Commercial Real Estate. This is done yearly, and we recommend it to the uh, council for renewal. And with that, I would make the motion. Um, public comment first. You want to do public comment? Okay. Any public comment? Seeing none, can I have a motion? You can. <laughs> now you can. I would like to move that uh, <clears throat> that we recommend the uh, sales ag sale agreement with Epstein Commercial Real Estate for the Hamden uh, Lots and Hamden Business Park. Second. <clears throat> Any discussion? All those in favor? All those opposed? Thank you. 
Next item on the agenda is the committee reports. Services Committee, Councilor McAvoy. Thank you. I have no uh, report. We haven't met since the last um, uh, town council meeting, but we are meeting next Monday. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, infrastructure Committee, Councilor Marble. The Infrastructure Committee's last meeting was on February 17th. Uh, we referred to finance the purchase of a red link, red link thermostat for use of this building, as was mentioned earlier. We also recommended a finance that the annual donation to the Goodwill Riders Snowmobile Club be increased from the current $1,000 annually to $2,000. This will still leave the town with funds to cover the administrative cost of registering them. The committee was provided an update by the town manager and director of public works concerning the town's municipal stormwater year two annual report. We were updated about the condition of the existing sewer line that was installed to serve Ammo Park. The director of public works had researched the issue of whether industrial outflow, as with the possible fiber right facility, would count towards the town's current purchased capacity with the Bangor wastewater treatment plant and it was determined that industrial outflow would. The committee voted to continue a lease for the new John Deere front end loader rather than to use the purchase option on the existing one. That was due to wear, tear, and, and downtime and expected costs. It was also decided to budget for a grapple attachment for that loader in order to move residents' brush taken to the transfer station to an area out back on the property and thus avoid having to pay to have it hauled away. Thank you. Planning and development. Planning and development met uh, March Monday, March uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, March second. Uh, <clears throat> a number of items went through was uh, the uh, draft for the mineral extraction repeal and draft for home occupation are now in the attorney's hands, and uh, the subdivision ordinance criteria is in the process of being reworked. Uh, we did, I believe, get to us the private roads. Uh, the rework for the ordinance, uh, subdivision ordinance for private roads, and that has gone to planning right. at this time. Uh, codification, the town stepped into, I think, almost two years ago to redo everything for codification, and that is, I believe, it's looking at by everyone as an April 18th deadline is being finished. Uh, <clears throat> there's a continual update on uh, MRC fiber rate timelines and it currently they are still in the process of of uh, getting all that's uh, everything done with the state that they need to do uh, the only other thing that we had was the uh, Epstein Realty Business Park and we already did that tonight thank you finance and administration Councilor Sorois uh, most of the items that we discussed tonight were discussed during the council meeting the service fees for abatement and process collection as well as the uh, HVAC uh, system quote and the budget adjustment for uh, the TIF as well as the foreclosed properties which were mentioned earlier two items that were not discussed during the council meeting one being the update on uh, the recording of meetings right now temporarily we have uh, former councilor Bill Shakespeare doing recordings for us here as well as uh, recordings uh, at the school budget or the school uh, school board meetings um, and that will continue until we get someone hired and I guess we're in the process we do have an applicant for that that position um, as well uh, we discussed uh, the town manager uh, six-month evaluation process and we moving forward with that as well and that's it thank you next item on the agenda is the manager's report I don't have a written report tonight but I do have a, a few updates on items that were not on the agenda uh, we did get some uh, welcome good news from the state last week. Um, it's preliminary, but we do expect a, an increase in municipal revenue sharing for FY17 of about $30,000. Uh, so it won't solve all of our problems, but it will, it will not hurt. Um, uh, on the issue of uh, the RSU22 uh, budgeting, uh, as you know, we've uh, been working uh, for the last several months with the other three communities in the RSU 22 district to share information and be in coordination on the municipal level. Uh, and we've had, um, we appeared before the school board back in January to uh, communicate what the budget issue as we see it. And we had a uh, meeting with the administration uh, on February 25th that I would describe as uh, constructive. We were able to share 
uh, information about some of the challenges that we're, we're looking at and uh, I think provide them uh, hopefully some good information to help inform their budget process. Um, I've advised the council and, and those at home uh, should be aware the RSU 22 uh, budget hearing has been scheduled for March 29th at 6.30 p.m. And as uh, Councillor Soroy said, uh, that meeting as, as well as other RSU 22 board meetings will be recorded and uh, those will be available both through the town's YouTube channel and on local cable. Uh, the third item I have for update is uh, following on the council's approval of the contract award for the uh, upgrade of lighting at the library to LED lighting. Uh, we have executed a contract with Alco Electric. Uh, so that work is, uh, they're now ordering the materials and that work will go forward later this spring. Uh, and then finally, uh, late last week, uh, the local application was filed for the MRC Fibrite. That came in on Thursday. Uh, it was sent out to peer review and peer review is currently scoping uh, what they'll need uh, in terms of supplemental reviews. It's obviously a, a significant proposal. Um, as Councillor McPike said, they are still in the process with DEP awaiting uh, three licenses there. And uh, uh, we expect that the public hearing at the planning board will open on Wednesday, April 13th. Uh, so if people are interested in that project, they can contact our community and economic development director, Dean Bennett, or call my office. Uh, and we're working to get those application materials online. We don't yet have them in digital format, but we, uh, we wanna make sure that information is available to those who are interested. Thank you. Next item on the agenda tonight is councilor comments. Uh, councilor Soroyce. I'm still mad. <laughs> <laughs> councilor McPike. Uh, just a thank you for Denise. <clears throat> Known you for quite a while. Known your parents for a lot longer. Fortunately, they didn't go to school with me. You went to school with my older brother and sisters. So uh, uh, congratulations and, uh, and uh, good luck in everything that you do in the future. Councilor Wild. Uh, tonight, I only have a couple of comments, and I wanted to thank Denise for the assistance in the past that she gave me when I um, first started with this council stuff because uh, it's kind of mind boggling. And uh, Denise, you will definitely be missed greatly. Councilor Marble. I made the Denise comments earlier and will again on Thursday. So. On to two other things. Um, I wanted folks to know that uh, young Mr. Cassavant on Hamden's, on the RSU 22 track team, was awarded the Gatorade Track Athlete of the State Award back in February. Um, and I want to remind voters that the District 2 hot stove meeting, and really what that means is we don't sit around a burning stove, but we meet at the library, and it's a chance to talk uh, more informally about town business. And the next one will be at 9 o'clock in the morning on Saturday the 19th. That's a week from this coming Saturday at the library. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Comia. Denise, thank you. Uh, enjoy yourself. You only go around once. Thank you. Councilor McAvoy. Thank you. I just want to remind everybody to shop local and buy American. Good night, Amden. Thank you. And I guess I just want to remind the public of the uh, meeting Thursday, 1 to 6. It isn't a meeting. It's like a farewell for Denise. Make sure everybody turns out in support of how much you've appreciated her over the last 15 years. Uh, thank you and good night. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Good night and thank you.